Get ready to set sail on the next episode of Painting and Travel as Roger and Sarah Batsimer visit the port of Tarpon Springs, the sponge diving capital of the world. Join them as they explore and paint the rich heritage of this unique Florida Gulf Coast village. so much character. Oh, it's really nice of them to let us get on this boat because I think we'll sit right over there towards the bow of this boat and paint the bow and the stern of that other one. I think it'll be perfect. Oh, I think this is really nice. And I can just sit down here. It's a little warm, pretty sunny day, but I think this might make a nice painting. So I'll go ahead and set up my easel. Tarpon Springs is located on the west coast of Florida along the Anklote River, which flows into the Gulf of Mexico. Over a hundred years ago, sponges were discovered near the mouth of the river, and soon 500 divers from the Greek islands immigrated here to form the basis of this unique Greek community. Since that time, Tarpon Springs has been known as the sponge capital of the world. During the early 1930s, 180 sponge boats lined the docks but today, tourism is the major trade, and only a few of the traditional sponge boats remain. The St. Nicholas boat line has been providing tourists with a taste of what it was like to be a sponge diver in earlier times. On board, the diver dons his heavy canvas suit lined with vulcanized rubber, followed by the breastplate and lead shoes. We gently glide down the Anklote River towards the Gulf of Mexico, past other more modern sponge boats and the many shrimp boats that make Tarpon Springs their home port. In a few minutes, we arrive at our destination and drop anchor. Today, scuba tanks have replaced the need for these cumbersome diving outfits. We look on as the traditional copper diving helmet is tightly clamped to the breastplate. The air hose checked, and with all 175 pounds of gear now secured, we watch the diver plunge into the dark water and disappear. After following a trail of bubbles from the river below, the diver emerges back on the surface carrying a few live sponges. 2,500 different varieties of sponges exist in the world, but only a couple of them are used commercially, of which the wool sponge is the most desirable. A trip to Tarpon Springs is not complete without sampling the Greek food. It's impossible to pass up the pastry shops with favorite desserts like baklava, but there are such large selections, it's difficult to choose. Tarpon Springs is one of those destinations that always calls us back for seconds, especially after tasting their famous Greek bread and Greek salad. Boy, it's another very hot day here in Florida, but I've got my easel set up now and it's a beautiful day. I don't think it's gonna rain for a while. We've been getting a lot of rain lately. And I'm going to paint a couple of shrimp boats here. Uh, I love the subject of painting shrimp boats and I've done many shrimp boats throughout the years. I'll show you a few now. I'll give you a little gallery tour of some of these paintings I've done. These are small paintings, just done on five by seven inch masonite board. I think I have about six of them here to show you.
This one was a rather large painting I did at sunset. So those are a few of the nautical or shrimp boat paintings I've done over the years. We have a, it's a beautiful day here, very sunny. I don't think it's gonna rain. Uh, it's no telling when another boat will come in or when something will move here, but we're gonna give this a try. We have a lot of wild parrots flying over too, so that's probably what you hear in the background. I spent a few minutes before I got set up here making the drawing of these two boats. When we were here a couple of days ago, the boat on the far side that has all the rust on it was where we're sitting now. And that's what I had hoped to paint. But these things move around. Actually, these boats haven't been out to sea or out to the Gulf of Mexico for several years because of uh, just high gas prices and that sort of thing. Uh, and they're actually taking on water. This boat here on the right, the white one, you can see it's listing a bit. And I've tried to change that a little bit in my drawing because if I drew that tipped over this way, it would just look a little bit odd. So I've tried to <laughs> straighten this particular boat up. Spent a few minutes doing this drawing here, maybe 15 minutes or so sketching this. I usually don't sketch things out quite as in as much detail as I have today, but this drawing has to be accurate. Without an accurate drawing, this painting will not look very good. So I did spend some time in doing the drawing. Uh, but after I got it drawn, I'm looking at the composition now and I'm saying to myself, I've got too much in this painting. I don't want to show as much. What I want to feature is this rusty area in this hull. And this part of the drawing seems to be taking a lot of my interest. So. Instead of erasing this and redrawing it, I'm just going to take, I'm going to crop the painting before I even start. So I'm going to just take a little bit of tape here and crop it a little bit on this side too. I don't think I've ever done this before quite like this, but but it's really so very hot out here. I just want to get on with my painting and especially before this boat has to move or something else changes. So this is a simple but probably pretty good solution to uh, the composition problem. Today, my palette consists of acrylic paints. I'm using white, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, lizard crimson, naphthol red, Indian yellow, and cadmium yellow light. This is as few colors as can be put on the palette and have my full range of colors because I have a warm blue and a cool blue, warm red, cool red, warm yellow, and a cool yellow. Now I could add black too, but I'm not going to do that yet. So that's a pretty limited palette. But I can pretty much do everything I need with just those colors. And I also brought my atomizer with me, just some water. This is very essential out here in the field, just to keep everything a bit wet as I paint. I've intentionally made this drawing quite dark on this board, because I know as I start to paint, these lines are going to disappear. So I wanted to get them on there strong enough where I can see these lines through the uh, paint as I work on this. A little bit of ultramarine blue and white. Maybe a touch of Indian yellow. I very seldom use a color straight out of the tube, even when mixed with white. I'm not getting much of the sky up here, but if I did get more sky, the sky up towards the zenith would be darker and cooler, and the sky down by the horizon would be warmer and most likely lighter. Hello. This is the Anklo River. A lot of people like to boat on this river. And about, oh, I'd say five miles out that way, 
is the Ankloat Lighthouse. And I've done many paintings of the Ankloat Key Lighthouse. This particular painting here is a very large painting. It measures three by seven feet. And these are a few other paintings of the lighthouse here that were done for my book on Florida lighthouses. One thing I have to be aware of when I paint out in this bright sunlight, when I take it back into the studio, I'm always surprised, even though I realize it when I'm out here, but when I bring this back into the studio, this painting is going to look a lot darker than it does out here. So I try and compensate for it a little bit out here, but I never seem to compensate enough. When I get back into the studio, I think to myself, wow, how did this painting get so dark? But it's just because I'm in such bright sunlight here that when I bring it indoors in more natural light, the painting looks dark. When I mix these three colors, red, yellow, and blue, I'll get a very dark color. It's really a, be a substitute for black. Uh, if I want it warmer, I'll just add a little more red. If I want it a little cooler, I'll add a little more blue and so on. I doubt if I'll use much of that phthalo blue. It's a very powerful color, very strong. Very attracted to the richness of the texture of these boats, especially the one on the far side there. Oh, it's just amazing how Mother Nature can just, through age and weather, bring out that, that beauty. Of course, I'm sure it's not quite as beautiful to the person who owns the boat, but to an artist or somebody that's looking at it aesthetically, it's just marvelous. One nice thing about using so few colors is I can't really go that wrong when it comes to color unity and color harmony. I don't have any odd colors on there that are going to just disrupt the overall harmony of my painting. can't do without this. I can't express that enough. This, if, I for, if I were to forget this in my box, there'd be no way I could paint out here, at least with acrylics. I want to lay in the color of this white boat. It's pretty white. The sun's really beating on it, but I certainly don't want to paint it pure white. I may want to put a white highlight on there at the very end or something, but right now, will make sort of a warm, neutral color. It's not bad to change the color of something like this. If it makes the painting a little more interesting, instead of having a pure white or almost, you know, whitish gray, if it enhances it in some way, then, you know, I feel like I'm free to do that. I don't want to, I don't want too much attention up here on these windows, so I may make those lighter. It feels to me, Every time I start a painting, out in the, especially out in the field, that I'm not getting very far, very fast. But I've also learned to understand that these are created in just small increments and it just can't start out to be a fabulous painting. Probably won't end up as a fabulous painting, but at least I don't get too discouraged when things don't uh, look the way I have envisioned them when I started the painting. This is a process that just keeps building and building. I haven't gotten into the details of it yet, but when something very light is reflected in the water, the reflection is darker. So if I have a white boat here, which I do, the reflection down there of the hull, which would be down here, it's going to be darker than this white. But conversely, if I have something dark, if I have a very dark hull, then the reflection is going to be lighter. It, uh, these reflections tend to just sort of neutralize. Uh, whites get a little bit darker, darks get a little bit lighter in these reflections. I've got that as a straight line across here. It's definitely not. This hull goes around that way. So I need to bring this down a little bit. 
and then back. Painting reflections is difficult to accomplish when in the field. Probably the easiest way to achieve a good convincing reflection is to take a photograph of it and work from a photograph. It seems to solve a lot of problems when you have, when you've frozen that in time and can study it a little bit more easily without all that movement. These shadows are changing all the time. And if the shadows look better now than they did when I started, I'm not going to try and keep my idea of what they were when I began. I, I see right now the shadow on the side of this boat as the sun comes over this ridge here, it's starting to cast more of an angular curved shadow down this way. And to me, that's very interesting. So I'll add that in, and I think it, of course, will, that shadow will change even more in a few minutes. These windows up here, I said, were too dark, so I'm going to lighten those a bit. I think I'll put all this in shadow. That will take some interest away from that. And there is a shadow under the eaves there. And I know as that sun comes around, that shadow is going to fall similar to this. So maybe to break up this area, which just kind of bothers me, I think I'll disguise that a little bit and just uh, put a shadow down there. And maybe I'll soften that, push it back a little bit. I can scarcely wait to start putting the rust in here, but I'm holding off until I get these big shapes and big patterns down first, and then I can put the, the rust and those little details in there, which really have attracted me to this boat. Well, the back side of this boat, of course, is getting most of the light, so I think I should lighten that some more. It's okay to have these dark colors underneath, though, because then I can work these lighter colors over it and some of these darker colors can still show through. I want to try and give this the impression this is, is round back here. It just goes around that way. It's a little difficult to do, but I can, hopefully I can pull that off with just making this a little bit lighter back there. It's not very descriptive. I mean, it almost looks like an old shoe or something. Uh, that's why it's really good to have the prow of this boat in here because it tells me what this is as well. And then when I have some rigging back here, that's going to make a big difference too. Well, I have most of my painting covered, which is always a bit of a goal for me to get everything covered, get all the white off my board. That way I can start to associate one color against another color better. If I, had, if I had, for instance, the sky were all white, it would really throw off my thinking as to what these colors actually are. Now I can compare these colors easily and a little more easily see what needs to be adjusted. You can really see how that shadow is bending around now over on the boat. This is a bit of a precarious setup here. My easel is hanging off the side of this boat and just leaning against this railing here. Hopefully it all doesn't go in the water. It wouldn't be the first time I've had some kind of a disaster in the field. It would be nice if I could just hit right on the mark what value and what color I want when I first jump into these things, but it's just, uh, just not the way this happens. And we all see differently, too. We all have different focus on what's important. There was a time I thought everybody could see things the same, but I'm convinced that's not true anymore. But when I look at this boat, I'll look at this totally differently than the man who owns the boat. I mean, I'll see it differently with my eyes. I look at this and I see textures. I see those colors. I see the shadows. I see what the aging has done. I'm guessing when the boat owner looks at that, he sees repairs that need to be done. I mean, he conceives it totally differently. And so the artist's job is to get this visual impression of things and 
for me, it's to try and bring out the beauty that this, that the age has, has brought on the, on the hull of the ship. You know, I never did talk about my brushes this morning, but I'm using a couple of flat brushes. I brought a fan brush with me. I haven't used that at all. I don't think I will. And I have a couple of pointed brushes here. But I don't uh, think I'll use more than two or three brushes all together. Mostly these uh, flats, called brights. As I get into the detail, I may pick up that small pointed brush for the detail. Look how the shadows have changed on this boat now. And look at the patterns that are running all through that hull. It's just amazing. I uh, can't keep up with that. So there's a point I had to say to myself, well, this is it. This is sort of what I've decided to do. I just better keep with that, kind of make what I can out of it and be happy. Uh, this is so much more interesting now than it was. It's very tempting to change that. And maybe I, maybe I will. I'll give it a minute or two here to let this sink in. If I did, do put those shadows on there like they are now, it will certainly take some interest away from this big white bullseye here. And maybe we'll bring some interest over into this area. So maybe that's a good thing. Why not? We'll try it. You know, it's just paint. If I can find a little inspiration here, and since I really don't have anything to lose, just acrylic paint, I think I'll go for it. The general theory is, is to get something locked in when you sit down here and just stay with that. But I don't necessarily go along with that sort of thinking. I'm not here necessarily to create exactly what I see or anything. I'm here to enjoy myself first and foremost. And I do that through painting. I love to paint. So if making changes along the way is part of what I enjoy doing, then I just do it. These edges, since that light is going around, these edges are getting a little softer, especially as the shadow falls down on the lower portions, it gets softer. It starts out hard here and then gets softer, hard here, gets softer. Well, it's coming around a little bit and having toughed this out in the sun and all is paid off because I like this shadow much better than I did before. I'm going to use this little pointed brush now. Get that little highlight on there. There's some fabulous colors there. Some beautiful dark shadows casting across where that anchor is, too. This is sort of the fun part now, putting in these little details. These shrimp boats have this ladder, of freehand this in here. I use this method where I put one hand on top of the other just to steady myself with a nice light, warm color and a few highlights on this railing. This line looks a little bit too straight to me. I want to have this boat, give this boat a little character. It's seen some productive use. So I'll try and give this boat all the credit it's due for all the activity that it's had throughout these years. This dancing pattern of light created here fascinates me. I've seen that many times, and when I look at it closely, it looks to me like that all those patterns form sort of diamond shapes, just lots of little diamond shapes within diamond shapes. So I'll uh, just see if I can add a few of these on here. I'm going to finish this in a studio. I'll tell you what I'm going to do with it now, and then we'll take a look at it later. But I'm just basically going to Tighten this up a little bit. I don't want it to look tight. 
but uh, just add more details, do some more refinements, maybe soften some edges, harden some other edges. Well, this has been a lovely day. Everything has cooperated. We've had the beautiful view across the uh, Antelope River here at the uh, sponge docks, Tarpon Springs. But uh, it's about noontime and the, the North Side Seafood Market, which is right behind us here, they have some lovely shrimp. So I think we're going to get some shrimp, bring them out on the dock here, enjoy the view a little more, and uh, call it quits on this painting until I put those extra touches on it. Then after I do that, uh, we'll put a frame on it and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Today my palette consists of acrylic paints. I have white, ultramarine blue. As many times as I've used these colors, why can't I think of what color it is? It's phthalo blue. My brain's getting cooked. You really need to get out of the sun. Yeah, well let me just uh, wrap this up. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.